Hi, this is Neil Shah from Counterpoint Research. Welcome to Counterpoint Conversations, uh, another episode where we talk to a lot of leading industry executives about the technology trends and how the industry is evolving. So I have a very special guest today with me, Patrick Shomet, Executive Vice President at Samsung MX. And he leads most of the Samsung MX initiatives and go to market everything, right? I would like to start with design thinking first mm -hmm. uh, in terms of when you're designing the products, especially now in the AI era and with Galaxy AI going into almost second generation, I would say, right? So when you're designing the new products now uh, for the last couple of years, what, what is your design thinking? Because the complete interaction mechanism, how we are going to interact with the phone is going to change, mm -hmm. like how it changed from a 2G era, right? With text keypad to 4G era with touch screens mm -hmm. and now with 5G era or 6G era, we can have more AI based uh, UI, right? So what are, what are your thoughts in terms of design? Well, I think the, the key diving thought is kind of adding value and helping our customer lives and then uh, making things simple, which is actually not easy, <laughs> actually not easy. And, and it's a good question. So uh, basically we don't separate hardware and software because we tend to look at we, even though the name of the company changed, we are the mobile experience company. Right. So what that means is we look at the experience that delivered customer and what is the best combination of hardware and software, including form factor uh, to do that. Correct. Uh, so basically we see that the experience as holistic. Uh, the interesting thing and the breakthrough, I believe, with AI mm -hmm. is that obviously the user interaction uh, with the device then becomes powered by intelligence. Mm -hmm. What that means is that the as I said, the entry mechanism can understand better the user intention. And of course, that will have an impact mm -hmm. on, on the devices themselves, uh, including uh, form factor as well. So for example, on the S25, now we introduce with a long press of the button, you can actually talk to your agent and Gemini and to get stuff done right. uh, with Gemini Live. Of course, it's meaningless to think about these button functions if you don't have the AI to support it. Uh, we have very large screen and very good displays. We can, if you see something interesting, you can by a simple gesture circle what's interesting uh, to deliver the outcome. So definitely all the input methods will be powered by more intelligence and that kind of unleash uh, some creativity for device form factors, but right. only device from different devices as well, I would say, in the future. Absolutely. And that's a very good point. And you see the transition have we have seen from this phone being a content consumption device to now more of a content creation device mm -hmm. and everything was more about download now we are also seeing a lot of upload mm -hmm. whether it's uh, a prompt or a token or it's a video to a social media right mm -hmm. or instagram mm -hmm. so thinking about that right so how the interaction changes and how do you see samsung uh, working with different partners like for example google right uh, as well as maybe Meta or Instagram, right? You have, and even Microsoft, you have been working with all of them, mm -hmm. bringing all the best experiences, whether it's social, whether it's uh, search, or whether it's uh, productivity mm -hmm. altogether, right? So how does this change with AI? And how does Galaxy AI basically encompass all of these experiences together? Okay, so we definitely we started with communication in the beginning these were like phones yeah we call them so we started from communication to the smartphone era to be mobile internet devices so you can actually consume and get stuff done on the internet and now as you said uh, most recently we have amazing camera creation devices and like even creation powered by ai uh it's cool to see that we are a company that works with the ecosystem we are open mm -hmm. and we've been working with android as an open ecosystem for a long long time and that will continue in the AI era. So what we you saw with the S25, we talked about this notion of one UI being uh, kind of the first AI UI. So yeah. that means uh, each of the touch point of the user interface being powered by intelligence. Mm -hmm. But we also talk about the AI platform that will be in partnership with, our, well, with Google and Android ecosystem. So what that means is we will expose these capabilities of the UI mm -hmm. to the agents mm -hmm. like Gemini, and to get to help the user accomplish action across different applications, across different surfaces. And that has to be an ecosystem play. Uh, mm -hmm. As I, I use this example a lot, 
if I see a YouTube video, uh, I want to summarize that video into a note. Right. So I think we have to work around the, the note application happens to be a Samsung app. YouTube is YouTube. Hmm. And we th they need to interact. talk to each other. Or I want to have the next 10 football games uh, of Arsenal in my calendar right. and get notification when they happen or get notification on the scores. So I need to be able to navigate across apps. And that's why we believe it's very important to work with our partners such as Google and the wider ecosystem to meet the, the customer need. Right, absolutely. And I saw a very interesting demo uh, at the launch, S25 launch, where uh, you can also scan the tickets. It's not just about notifying you about the matches, but also scan the tickets and use it, right? And even purchase it. Absolutely. It's a complete journey. Right. So, uh, talking about journey, uh, if you uh, look at a user, right? So, he's using a phone, but now you are bringing Galaxy AI features to the more ecosystem uh, hardware which you have, right? So how, how do you see the interaction between the devices and how seamless it would be uh, between a ring or between a watch or a TV, right? And a, and a home plans. Absolutely. We started the experience journey actually long before the advent of generative AI. And as in our company is called Mobile Experience Company right. uh, for a reason. And we, we believe for a long time uh, that providing a seamless interaction mm -hmm. within the device and across the devices is, is important. And basically what that means is you center the experience around the user and what they need to do. Mm. Like, I want to communicate. So of course, obviously, I mostly communicate with my phone. But let's say I am watching a YouTube video on my tablet and you call me. And basically what will happen, the YouTube video will be interrupted mm. and I will take with one click the phone call on my buds. And when that phone call is terminated, I will hang up the call and my YouTube video will continue. So providing seamless experience across devices has been a kind of a long journey. And yeah. we've been working with the ecosystem partners, including Google, Microsoft, and others. Uh, Spotify, we have music integrated across all of the Galaxy devices and TV and watch right. as well for a long time. So that has been one part. And then, of course, with the advent of multimodal AI, mm. the user interface now gets a good understanding of what the user wants, and we can deliver even more magic. Correct. Uh, on, but the foundation has to be seamless connectivity. Correct. And uh, talking about foundation, so in the end, it, as, as we go in this AI journey, right, there'll be multiple models running in the background, right? Whether it would be Google's Gemini Nano or Google's Gemini or even Bard, right? For sense, which would be learning about my personal uh, habits, uh, experiences within the device and interactions with the device. So how, how do you see the evolution of that model right so if today i'm using a s25 and after a couple of years i upgrade to s27 can i take all of my learnings in that phone to the new phone yeah absolutely we introduced the notion which we call the the, uh, the, the personal uh, data platform mm -hmm. we are basically uh, the all the knowledge of the user context and usage and mm -hmm. mass usage is kept uh, it should be private and secure Correct. on the device, yeah. but that's linked to your account, to your person. Mm -hmm. And when not only when you change the device, but when you use multiple uh, devices in Galaxy, they have this kind of knowledge nice. of this context, which can be used to facilitate the experience. Great. And that is just mostly on device, or it will be also my Google queries, which goes into the cloud, because Google will also have their model learning about me for personalizing the experiences, right? So how does that work with Google? Uh, partnership. Right. Let's be separate. So the usage of your device, mm. your Galaxy device, stay on device. Sure. Uh, and then that's private and we don't communicate that anywhere. Of course, within an application, let's say you are using YouTube or you are using uh, Instagram or you're using WhatsApp, mm -hmm. this application provider or this application, to the extent that you are using it, will know your interaction with that app. Right. But the wider context of the user uh, interaction, which is across the device, stays on device and right. not in private. That's great. And uh, how do you see the role of Knox uh, when it comes to AI? It, it has been the industry leading standard when it comes to device security on Android phones and privacy. How, how do you see the evolution of Knox in this AI era, on device AI era? Well, it becomes more important. Uh, obviously, we started Knox and, and as a kind of, the, well, we talk about privacy, but only privacy matters only if you can deliver it, which is <laughs> with security. So, so Nox is a technology that makes it secure at a uh, cheap and hardware level. And, and basically, uh, we started that journey long before AI, like over mm -hmm. 10 years. Yeah. 
And of course, with what we just discussed on the, the, the personal data and the, the, the privacy, having some key part of the uh, user data being secured, mm -hmm. uh, really secured by Nox becomes more important, not only on one device, but across devices, where we introduced Nox Matrix, which enable to guard security across multiple devices of your mm -hmm. ecosystem. That's great. Uh, in terms of experience, you're talking about experience. Experience is something you're not star for Samsung. So when you talk about experience uh, for AI, right, there are multiple models, as I said, running in background in future. So how, who will play the role of orchestration that if I'm using uh, Gemini, but at the same time, I'm using a model within Adobe app, right, mm -hmm. which is taking up memory. So who uh, does that orchestration that I get the best experience? Well, it's, first of all, it's, it's a start. Uh, today, we, have, uh, we, we announced multi-agent strategy. Mm -hmm. So we have the capability on the device, which are native, which are exposed to agent. Eventually, the customer will choose. Okay. Uh, the, the underlying technology shouldn't matter to the customer. Uh, if I choose to use the Gemini, then uh, I use the Gemini model. But likewise, you can choose to use big beyond our devices. Yeah. Uh, in the future, maybe something else. Yeah. I think it's our job to optimize all this resource uh, utilization uh, so that the performance is guaranteed and, and the user's experience delivered. That's great. And talking about optimization, I think Google has been a very good partner, but at the same time, Qualcomm has been a very good partner as well for optimizing a lot of these experiences because uh, on-device requires a lot of power and optimizing different models for the Samsung phones is also important from experience perspective. So how, can you talk about how, how, how do you work with Qualcomm in optimizing and the developers as well as some model players to optimize. Yes, so there is a lot of work which has been done with Qualcomm, obviously, uh, to optimize the performance, specifically for the S25. We have a custom uh, version of the Qualcomm chipset, which yeah. enable a lot of the visual or camera uh, functionality uh, to be kind of uh, optimized, higher performance. Mm -hmm. We have a pro visual engine that deliver wonderful uh, kind of clarity of details. Uh, display and, and zoom capabilities on the S25. Hmm. And those things have been optimized at chipset level with Qualcomm. Uh, the security function have to be supported at chipset level and so on and so forth. Brilliant. So, final question for mine. Uh, what are the best or the top use cases you care about more when it comes to phone on AI from AI perspective? And it could be in, in future also, but hmm. what would be your ideal use case for AI? For me, yeah. Uh, currently, I think currently I'm really uh, excited about everything which is around communication. Okay. So the, obviously, I, I'm French. Uh, I, I live in London. I live in Korea, and I work in Korea. But you so speak Korean really well. I'm trying, but now <laughs> now it's kind of a, it's much better with uh, with uh, the S25 and the Galaxy AI functionality. So the communication, breaking communication, uh, is really interesting. Uh, a lot of the function in the camera like the edition yeah. like and the one i like a couple i like is the audio eraser uh, we have yeah. so many videos where like the there is some background, background noise nice. or you i have a video of my children on the beach but there is always some wind ah. and it's kind of annoying nice. and uh, you will see if you try on s25 the ux the user interaction tool you open that video and it will tell you how to remove the noise or yeah. amplify the voice or remove music it's very easy and, and quite fixed. So I really like this one. I would say in the future, more uh, forward looking. Mm -hmm. uh, my dream is a phone which is really accessible. Accessible means anybody can use it. Right. Uh, it's I don't need to know about the menu or the feature name or the settings. Right. And the phone truly care about the customer. Right. And can adapt to that customer. So that's a very ambitious vision. It will take a long really time. Really good vision. But that's our direction to make it simpler to the point where the device will understand the customer needs yeah. and yeah. deliver it as opposed to people having to learn any functionality. Absolutely. And I think simplicity is a new differentiation, I would say. And all the best for the journey. Thank you. Towards that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you.